Today we are moving our conversation into detox, both hormone and environmental toxin elimination. We come into contact with tons of chemicals on a daily basis, and our bodies process these chemicals through our natural detox pathways. Detox is sometimes confused with crash juice cleanses, but the detoxification that we're talking about today is the one that happens every day within our bodies. Detoxification is a natural process that our liver, kidneys, lungs, lymphatic system, gut, and skin perform on a daily basis to get rid of metabolic byproducts that our body produces and toxins that are absorbed through our skin, lungs, digestive tract, from the environment. I'm going to fill you in on what you need to know to avoid the toxins and address those that you already are carrying and how to optimize your body's ability to detoxify. The good news is that this is something you can easily take into your own hands and create a cleaner lifestyle for you and your family. Did you know that 80,000 toxic chemicals have been released into the environment since the Industrial Revolution? What's worse is that very few have been tested for their long-term impact on human health. You might be thinking, well, I don't live next to a power plant or a major highway, but that hot red lipstick you put on in the morning? Chemicals. The shower gel you love so much that smells like vanilla? Chemicals. The Environmental Working Group surveyed more than 2,300 people, and they found that the average adult uses nine personal care products each day with 126 unique chemical ingredients. Wow, right? Besides the obvious hormone imbalance symptoms, poor detoxification can manifest as chronic fatigue, insomnia, acne, eczema, dark circles under your eyes, trouble losing weight, and even diabetes or dementia. Now, let's get a little nerdy and talk about how detoxification actually works in your liver. There are two phases of liver detoxification, phase one and phase two. Each of these phases require different nutrients and even herbs to support them. It's important for you to know that after phase one detox, the byproducts can actually be more harmful than the original toxin. That is why you need to make sure that you have the nutrients needed for both phases of detoxification and especially phase two. If a detox program only supports phase one detoxification, then you might be left with greater chemical load than you started with. And that can manifest with feeling lethargic and having headaches. You may even notice that your skin looks dull, dry, or you're having acne breakouts. So let's talk about the nutrients needed for both phase one and phase two detoxification. In phase one, nutrients like quercetin, which is found in blueberries, red onions, and apples, vitamin C from strawberries, broccoli, and red bell pepper, as well as vitamin E from almonds and olive oil can help you run this part of your detox process. Phase two is supported by nutrients like resveratrol, glutathione, our master antioxidant, and amino acids like glutamine, glycine, and taurine. Yep, amino acids are important, which is why protein intake must be on point if you want to support liver detoxification. If you remember from day five when we were getting in deep on estrogen metabolism, we also talked about how environmental chemicals were one contributing factor that could lead to estrogen dominance. There are some chemicals called xenoestrogens that mimic your natural estrogen but with none of the benefits. They are found in some pretty common places like personal care products and even receipts from the grocery store that you and the cashier may be touching all day long. They also sometimes line takeout food containers and plastic Tupperware. The next time you reheat your leftovers in the microwave, just take a second to make sure that you're choosing glass or opt for using a pot on the stove instead. Xenoestrogens mimic our natural estrogen and can potentially cause estrogen dominance. We talked a lot about the symptoms of estrogen dominance in day five, and we need to revisit it a bit here because our ability to metabolize and get rid of estrogens plays a big role in the development of estrogen dominance. Estrogen is broken down in the liver, 
And to do this, your liver requires a lot of different nutrients. Your liver uses a process called hydroxylation in phase one to remove estrogen safely. Remember back to day five where we talked about that there are three types of estrogen. Estradiol is the predominant form of estrogen when we are in our reproductive years, that is before menopause. Estrone is the primary estrogen once we make that transition into menopause. And estriol is highest when we're pregnant. When these estrogens are detoxified in the liver, they produce different metabolites, and these metabolites are not created equally. 2-hydroxyestrone, or 2-OH estrogen, this is your rock star estrogen metabolite. You can remember it as goody two-shoes. This is a more stable metabolite that isn't as carcinogenic as other estrogen metabolites. There are certain cancers that are estrogen dependent, like certain forms of breast and ovarian cancer. If you have had breast cancer in the past that was estrogen positive, then getting your metabolites tested is even more important. When testing, we would like to see a higher 2-OH estrogen relative to the 16-OH metabolite. Now we also need to talk about 4-OH estrogen or 4-hydroxyestrone. This is the most carcinogenic or cancer-causing of the metabolites. Having high levels of estradiol circulating can cause an increase in the 4-OH. So again, it's really important that our detoxification pathways are working well so that we can clear out these estrogen metabolites. This metabolite in particular is associated with increased DNA damage. Now our last metabolite is the 16-OHE1 or 16-hydroxyestrone. This metabolite can cause tissues to grow or proliferate. We see breast tissues that become swollen, tender, and even you can develop cysts in your breast. Also cysts on the ovaries, different kinds of cancers, and the proliferation of the endometrial tissue, which leads to clots in the menstrual blood, is associated with this metabolite. It's also a very strong form of estrogen, so it can really promote estrogen dominance. Caffeine for some women, whether it's coffee, soda, or tea, can increase the 16-OH E1 formation. So if you find that you have high levels of this on the Dutch test or any of the testing we've been talking about, then you should consider cutting back on coffee and instead replacing it with decaf green tea or matcha. This stuff can get a lot more complicated, but I don't want you to worry. There are doctors out there that you can partner with to help you navigate this. And if you contact some of the lab companies that we've discussed, they actually have a provider list available to help you get with someone who knows what these lab results mean and what to do about it. There are a lot of therapies that can help optimize your estrogen detoxification pathways, and I wanna go into them here. DIM or methane from cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, kale, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts is a natural source of DIM. And this is an important nutrient in getting your estrogen packaged up and in the right pathways. That's why we put so much emphasis on these foods and they're so important in preventing or recovering from estrogen dominance. DIM helps our body convert 16-OH estrogen to 2-OH, remember goody two-shoes, estrogen, which is the safer metabolite of estrogen. Typically, women do best with 100 milligrams once to twice daily if they're using it as a supplement. In fact, this is one of my favorite treatments for symptoms of estrogen excess because it's so effective. I also encourage women to focus on eating broccoli sprouts because they are much more potent than broccoli itself. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now you may have heard of glutathione. It's called the mother of all antioxidants because it is incredible in protecting your cells. It's also what prevents us from getting gray hair. A precursor to glutathione is N-acetylcysteine. So using N-acetylcysteine, maybe partnering it with glutathione and bringing in resveratrol are all antioxidants that can help the liver clear out those estrogens effectively. And just to note, while red wine does contain resveratrol, it does also lead to increased levels of estrogen and liver burden. 
So I would say go for the grapes, go for the produce, and consider a supplement over that glass of red wine. Calcium deglucurate is another nutrient that helps your liver conjugate estrogens so that they can be excreted. Beneficial doses can range from 50 to 1,000 milligrams of calcium deglucurate daily, and these can help balance and optimize estrogen levels. You know, a little unknown fact is that iron is an important factor in detoxification. In fact, the enzyme that metabolizes estrogens in phase one detox requires iron to work properly. So you can support your liver through food. Yup, as we've been talking about, food is medicine. And dandelion root tea daily can be tremendous in supporting your liver health. Yeah, you mean that weed that grows in your garden or in your lawn that people want to eradicate is actually medicine? 100%. The root can be used to support the liver, and we also move hormones out through our kidneys. And this is where the leaf can be utilized. You can saute it or put it into a salad, and it will support detoxification through those kidneys. So that entire weed is some pretty potent medicine. Burdock root is another favorite food as medicine tool that I love to use in my practice and that I use personally. When you look for it in the grocery store, it's sometimes called gobo root. Now, it'll look a little bit like a dirty carrot. Go ahead and peel the skin off and you can chop it up, put it into soups, put it into stir fries or make it into a tea. Please understand that anything that really supports the liver is going to have a bitter taste. It's designed that way. But it doesn't take a whole lot of burdock or dandelion root to get the benefits. So when you're starting out with it, use smaller amounts so that you don't have an adverse taste reaction. Your liver also uses tons of amino acids from proteins to detoxify. Make sure that you're eating a palm-sized serving of complete protein at every meal. Whether you are vegan or vegetarian, you can combine foods to ensure that you're getting complete amino acids to run your liver detoxification. Now, once your liver has broken down estrogen and packaged it up, it's up to your bowels to move it out of the body. As I also explained, we are secreting estrogen through our kidneys as well, which is why you have to make sure you're drinking plenty of water. You see, you have to pee and poop out your hormones. So what happens if you aren't pooping daily? If you aren't going to the bathroom every single day, you aren't clearing out estrogen from your body like you should be. Healthy bowel movements are essential for hormone balance. I'm going to nerd out for just a second here and explain a really important enzyme. So there's this enzyme in our gut that's produced by the microbes or the bugs that hang out in there. If you have the wrong kind of bugs growing in your gut or just an imbalance of good guys versus bad guys, then you can have elevated levels of beta-glucuronidase. One of the jobs of beta-glucuronidase is to reactivate estrogen that was excreted by the liver into the intestines. If estrogen is reactivated, then it can be resorbed by the gut lining and brought back into circulation in the body. Now your liver is dealing with way more estrogen than it had planned on. If you have estrogen dominance, you need to make sure that you're moving your bowels daily and that you have a healthy balance of good gut bugs supporting your gut health. This is where tests like stool testing can be really valuable. Companies like Genova Diagnostics, Great Plains Laboratories, and Doctors Data can measure levels of beta-glucuronidase in the stool to see if it's a potential cause for your hormone imbalance. If you have blatant gut symptoms like diarrhea, constipation, bloating, or excess gas, then you need to work with a doc who understands how to treat functional gut disorders. Because one, if your gut health is off, well, then you better believe your hormones are going to be off. And two, living with gut issues just isn't fun. There are some easy things that you can start doing right now if you aren't going to the bathroom every single day. One is you can supplement with magnesium citrate. This is a form of magnesium that will actually pull water into the intestines and help your bowels move. But of course, we need to be drinking enough water between meals, and that's really one of the best starting places. If you're having trouble moving your bowels, aim to drink a little more than half your body weight in ounces of water every day. 
We also want to be employing stress reduction practices like meditation and movement. So here's the deal. You need to be in a state of parasympathetic activity or the rest and digest aspect of your nervous system in order for your gut to function optimally. In addition, movement or daily exercise helps our intestines move the waste out of our bowels. Increasing fiber to at least 25 grams daily by eating more vegetables can really help you bulk your stool and be able to move that waste out of your body. If you're already seed cycling, well, you're already ahead of the game in getting ample fiber. I also want to note that if you're having difficulty with constipation, diarrhea, or really any other digestive symptoms, you want to go back and revisit our thyroid class and consider testing for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth via a three-hour methane and hydrogen lactulose breath test.